Morning guys, it's me, your line brother Jasper Zach, and welcome back to the vlog. Today we'll be doing something I have absolutely never done before. Deck review. But not just any deck review, mind you. Today we'll be doing a deck review that is completely different from any other deck review I've ever done. Today will be the first time I'm doing a deck review for an NDO deck of playing cards. So here we can see the School of Card Tree V1 playing cards. We can see that the box is cream colored and instead of having a cream colored logo, uh, we used a white logo. This design choice repeats itself in the Broken Borders 2019 edition in which we use the NDO logo in white, whereas the, the borders of the card is cream colored. 52 non-standard playing cards. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this, this refers to the fact that the cards do not have pips and do not have values. The School of Kaiju playing cards was the first deck that ever did this. Hilariously, when the School of Kaiju V1 playing cards was being released, um, a company known as Kaiju Touch that you guys may know began showing their work of a deck that was pretty much exactly the same concept. I'm 100% sure that neither of us copied each other when it comes to the idea, the concept of doing non-standard playing cards. Especially as high-level cardists, it's very easy to come to the realization that we need non-standard playing cards for use in cardistry. Look at the back. This is basically the back design of the playing cards, but instead of having the normal white borders and white backdrop, we actually have cream-colored backdrop here. On the side, it says Legacy Finish. This was the last deck that we ever printed at the company that we decided to use for this deck. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it later on. On the opposite side, it says the new deck order in a serif font. Very, very, very different from our modern, the new deck order design language. Nothing on the top and a little bit of copyright at the bottom. Let's open this up. As I've mentioned, this deck was the last deck that we decided to print at this specific printing company. The production quality of this deck did not meet the expectations I had, the required expectations I had for the deck design. The cellophane sucks. The cellophane absolutely, absolutely sucks. Um, this wasn't a problem for most people at that point of time, but it was really, really annoying to me. I didn't like this. And the cellophane had to be simple, easy, perfect to use. It had to come out in one pool. Just go here. That's it. That's all I wanted and that's all I would accept. Um, this deck of playing cards, the cellophane wasn't good enough and Partly because of that, we decided never to work with that company ever again. This deck playing cards comes with 54 playing cards. This deck of playing cards comes with one mission statement card and one free download of the Shapeshifter card tutorial. The deck of playing cards also comes with one double backer card and one double facer card. And so why I designed the deck to have one double backer and one double face playing card? The main reason was because I expected that some cardists would be into magic. And if you're using the School of Cardistry V1s to do magic, uh, it's still absolutely possible. All you gotta do is get your audience member to sign the card. And no one would expect a double facer or a double backer in a deck of playing cards quite like this. Holding the School of Country playing cards in your hands, you will notice that this deck of playing cards feels completely different from any other deck of playing cards on the market right now and at that point of time. You see, most companies use the United States playing card company for their playing cards. And because of that, all of their ages feel exactly the same. Instead of what you see right here, which is a perfectly clean card, completely flat, very, very nice to touch, you get a soft, fluffy feeling of the sides of the cards. One of the things that I've come to realize is that this glass-like finish that appears on the edge of our playing cards makes certain moves like dribbles and springs feel vastly different 
from your normal standard US PCC playing cards. Looking at the back of the playing cards, you will notice that every single design element that appears on the back of the playing cards is hand-drawn. That's right, even here, up here, where all the lines are very thick and very close together, or right down to here, where there's this hatching-like pattern, the individual pages on the School of Kaishri crest, and even the banner that appears that says School of Kaishri. Every single design element was hand-drawn by our artist, Marcus Lim. If you look at the design elements right here on the borders, and even deeper inside over here, you will notice that this deck pays tribute to standard playing cards. The playing cards like Aladdin playing cards, bicycle playing cards. We wanted to make sure that for the first deck of School of Kaishri playing cards, it wasn't too difficult for our audience and for our customers to make the relationship between normal playing cards and the non-standard playing cards. Finally, to pay tribute to the art of Kaishri, we had to make sure that like in the corners up here and the fan in the middle, we had a little bit of elements of cardistry that appears on the back of the playing cards. Now, as we turn our attention from the backs of the playing cards over to the faces of the playing cards, we notice that suddenly there's colors. And the main reason for this, and the main reason why I added colors to the faces of the cards is that during the prototyping phase of designing the School of Card Tree View on playing cards, as I was playing with the deck of playing cards, I realized that just black and white, this deck of playing cards looks too simple, too old fashioned, and basically it lacked a little bit of dynamicness to the deck design. So instead of having it just be all black and white, um, I added the red elements up here and down there to the deck design. These red elements here and here, also hand-drawn, also by Marcus Lim, um, takes inspiration from normal playing parts as well. So you can take a look at that and you can imagine that tessellating it sideways and upwards you would recognize it as the normal back design of a normal deck of playing cards. Where the deck looks really, really different and much more experimental is on this line that goes across the faces of the cards. Basically, while I was talking to the artist Marcus Lim about the face design, I told him that I wanted the face design of the cards to be sort of like a court card but an abstract version of it. And because of that, he took out elements from, I think, the Jack, Queens and Kings of repeating lines like this, um, checkerboard-like patterns like this, and, you know, a lot of this thing here. All of these are inspired by the court cards on conventional playing cards. One of the things that made me really happy about this deck of playing cards was that the back design of the playing cards, when compared to the front, the face designs in this place, look completely different. It gave a very different flavor to the cardistry being presented. This design choice allowed the cards to be presented in a more traditional, typical playing cards fashion or in the much more, much more stylish, much more modern looking face design. Now, you may be thinking that it just was it sounds like everything in the design process went exactly according to plan. Why did you stop printing with that company that printed this deck of playing cards? And there is only one reason for that. You see, the company that printed the School of Kaishri V1 playing cards was also the company that printed Cozy playing cards. And after printing Cozy playing cards, we realized that uh, the fanning ability of the playing cards wasn't quite as good as USPCC. Between Cozy playing cards and the School of Kaishri V1 playing cards, I asked them, hey man, can you put double of the shiny thing on the surface, the thing that makes it oily, the thing that makes the cards able to fan? Could you put it like twice as much so that the fanning ability of the cards can improve and it can become better at fanning? compared to the first version of playing cards. They said, yeah boy, no problem boy, we'll make the cards as fanable as possible. Fast forward two or even three months later, when they finally sent the cards over to us, um, I, I was really happy. I cracked open the cards, I took the cards right off the box, 
and the very first fan I did was not up to standard. Luckily, thankfully, I am a pretty well-learned cardist. I've learned a lot of different techniques and different styles of cardistry and I knew that fanning powder would be would easily solve the problem of the cards not being able to fan quite as well. So I just rocked out a pack of fanning powder, ta -ta 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 -ta, closed it, did some ferrules, bam! The deck was absolutely perfect after that. Not only that, I also had created a move called the side pressure fan at that point of time that allowed you to fan absolutely any deck of playing cards. Later on, I found out that that move wasn't really an original creation by myself, but that's a story for another time. Another thing that's also really exciting about the School of Cardistry V1 playing cards was that this is actually the first deck of playing cards that I allowed someone else to produce the trailer for it. If you guys were around at that point of time, you may remember that the School of Cardistry V1 playing cards had a trailer that didn't feature me at all and I didn't even shoot and instead of that it featured Claudia Xiao my good friend my little sister Claudia Xiao so at the end of the day despite the fanning and the cellophane problems that the School of Country V1 has I actually really enjoy using the School of Country V1 playing cards especially when they are almost brand new right out of the box it feels so absolutely divine before the sides of the cards get you know broken in from hand sweat or because you drop the cards on the floor or hit the stuff with it. Um, before all of that happens, the edges of the cards are absolutely divine. They feel so good in the hands. Released at the end of 2014 or early 2015, this deck of playing cards actually sold more than 2,500 decks. And this was in a time where cardistry companies wasn't really a thing other than you know the verts and, and hand lords and Dan and Dave. Alright guys, so that's my quick, dirty, simple, informal review for the School of Cardistry V1 playing cards. If you want to see more deck reviews or history explanations for School of Cardistry playing cards, leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know. I'm not 100% sure whether or not this kind of almost historical academic deck reviews will be interesting to you guys so let me know in the comment section below if not i have no idea remember the school of country v5s come out publicly on the 19th of october and if you're an early access patron or even a producer patron like one of these awesome guys ooh, ah shout outs to you guys you guys are awesome then you'll be able to get it before anyone else on the 12th of October. Until next time guys, it's me, your online brother Jasper's deck. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye bye.